Welcome to this edition of On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Dudley Najib, along with... Linus Najib. You know, we keep finding ourselves here at our AMP TV Now studio, but mm. hey, it is what it is, and we thought we, we could still bring you news and information, all that's happening and going on it's in so Central much, Valley. It's so much is happening out there. It's, it's hard to put it all in one 30-minute episode, so... Well, and speaking of what's going on and how to get the information to us, we keep telling you every week how to do it, but we're going to keep doing it until you actually do it. So how do people get us the information? How do they get us the news? Media at amptvnow.com. Dot com. So you almost it, forgot the dot com. I no, felt like you were going to not say it. It should be automatic. <laughs> Media at amptvnow.com. Dot com. I know people, a lot of people wonder why do we have to send that because we don't have time to go and research on Facebook like any other media organization. Yes, you know? some people give us stuff and say, well, you can just check those pictures out on Facebook uh, or they just send it to my personal email. You know why we don't aren't able to do all that? Because we're usually in here filming. So, <laughs> And plus we have a team that does that for us. So we wanted you to understand because people keep asking why do we have to do that. We have a team, folks, an actual production team that assists us, tell us what the latest news that's going on, and we are able to get that information. In fact, even the city of Fresno, who we're going to be talking about today because they have sent us press information that we want to be able to tell you about what's happening in the community. So you all can do the same thing, whether you're in Madera, mm -hmm. Fresno, Modesto, Tulare, <laughs> any of those places that are recognized as the Central Valley, we will cover that, especially if, it's, if it is affecting urban communities. So Good. if somebody come and give you a piece of paper and say, can you put this on the news, would you do it? A piece of paper? What does no, that a mean? a picture or whatever. Um, no, only because we, we need it submitted to the right people. I would give them the information to where it should go. And mm -hmm. that way we don't have that type of confusion because that, that's, the, that's the whole thing. We have a team. So don't just give it to Julia or Linus and expect us to be able to cover it. And, in fact, our, the same team covers the same thing with Valley Black Talk Radio. So if there's news and information that you're trying to get on the radio on our 1680 AM counterpart, then you still send it to media at <laughs> amptvnow.com. Again, those people handle it for us. They tell us what's going on. And if it's an event that you're trying to get us to and you want us to cover, we determine if that's newsworthy and where it's going to affect all of the community or that all the community needs to know about. And we do appear. Mm -hmm. We do show up because people ask, what events do you show up to again? Things that are affecting all of the community or where a majority of the community is. Mm -hmm. And you can always watch us on NBC, KC24 affiliate, NBC mm -hmm. affiliate, said that backwards. And that's at 5.30 a.m. right before the national news segments. And you can also watch us on CBS 47. And that's, again, before the national news segment. And that's at 6.30 a.m. Those are the ways to reach us. I just want to let people know. Yeah, they can right early in the morning see our smiley face. Okay, so if they it. if they can't get up that early, what should they do? You well, they can, can go to AMPTV Now News mm -hmm. and dot com. And I was talking about DVR. <laughs> I was saying just put it on your DVR, and if they don't have that, then you can watch all the past episodes online at onmetv.amptvnow.com or sign up to our updates, and we always send that out. And on today's show, we will be talking about the city of Fresno, the 2016 fiscal budget that I know Mayor Ashley Swearingen uh, was able to release last week and discuss. We also want to talk about what the District 3 updates, what's mm -hmm. happening. And giving a, before we get to that, we want to give a briefing of, I believe, Eric Payne and Cal Johnson. They sent us a media release, by the way, mm -hmm. to media at amptvnow.com. We do appreciate that. And they're talking about the state of education. And that will be coming up June 1st at 6 p.m. And that'll be at the Downtown Club. And that is the latest information. And we'll find out more about that. And we'll see if we'll be having one. We'll probably have one of our reporters to be able to give us information about that as well. And that is hosted by Community College Trustee Eric Payne with special guest, again, Fresno Unified School District Trustee Cal Johnson. And that's at the Downtown Club at 6 p.m. at, at uh, June 1st. And I believe that's free. Mm. Well, if it's a payment, you know, we do apologize. No, it, it really is free. State of education. Would, would it be food there? Oh, gosh. <laughs> if there's food, will you be there? That's the question. So after the break, we will be talking about the City of Fresno, that 2016 fiscal budget. If you are watching On Me Sunday Mornings, we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated of the San Joaquin Valley Alumni Chapter present the 22nd African American High School Recognition Ceremony 2015. So join us on Sunday, June 7th as we celebrate from 3 to 5 p.m. students who are ready to take the next step. Admission is free and will be at the Fresno State Satellite Student Union. The cost for participants who would like their kente cloth is $15. Speaker includes Teresa Price, founder and executive director of National College Resource Foundation. For application and information on sponsorship or how your participant can be involved in this event for the 2015 High School Recognition Ceremony, call Kimberly Lewis at 559-246-0494 or Lisa Nichols at 559-577-9793. It takes a village to raise a child. Dinner can take hours to make, and who has the time? Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new Dump Dinner Cookbook. Now just dump and bake for full meals in minutes. Look at these smothered pork chops. Or this, the best pan pizza ever. Or start with chicken and mixed veggies. Add a can of creamy chicken soup, a few chunks of Velveeta cheese, and top with a can of crescent rolls. Cheesy chicken pot pie with perfect flaky crust. Or try this shortcut ravioli lasagna. Dump frozen raviolis on tomato sauce. Add fresh spinach and cheese, Layer as high as you like for steamy, melty, home-style lasagna. Stop slaving over dinner. Make delicious meals in a flash with Dump Dinners, just $10. But wait, call now and you can get my best-selling Dump Cake Cookbook. Just dump and bake for the best cakes ever. You can get Dump Dinners and Dump Cakes for $10. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-781-0038 to get your Dump Dinners cookbook on this special TV offer. It's not sold in stores, so call now or go to buydumpdinners.com. Don't miss out. Call now. What if you suffer a major heart attack, stroke, or invasive cancer and don't die? Would your family be able to financially maintain their standard of living without you? Ease your mind today by calling MKG Insurance Agency at back to On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Dudley-Najib, along with... Linus Najib. And before we get to the proposed budget, I made a mistake and said that it was a past budget, but it's the proposed budget by Mayor Ashley Swearingen for the 2016 fiscal budget. So Mayor Ashley Swearingen, along with the city manager, Bruce Rudd, they announced the proposed city of Fresno budget for the fiscal year of 2016. And it looks like it's a $1.2 billion budget. Billion with a B? Yeah, long, and it's supposed to represent that long-term financial stability for the mm. city of Fresno. It's supposed to improve the ongoing uh, public safety that they've been focusing on. And here are some of the things that um, it's supposed to sustain and sustainable levels. It's supposed to add 43 police officers over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. It adds a fire company to Station 9 at Clinton and Fruit Avenues. We know where that is. Increasing a minimum daily staffing from 70 to 73. Mm -hmm. It's going to provide a commitment to completely replace the fire department's fleet in the next eight years as well as replace 50 police cars and 14 more motorcycles. And I remember they were talking about those vehicles were dilapidated for a number of years. And I know people said, God, they're getting new vehicles and mo new motorcycles, new police cars. Why is that? And I remember having a discussion with the mayor when we had a meeting. And I believe it was with the chamber, and they explained, you know, how old some of their vehicles were that were breaking down. Well, basically, they need it. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to replace that to service the community appropriately. Also funds video storage needed for police department's body camera program. Mm. People should feel that that's a positive thing. The body camera program, which has been, we've been talking about that nationwide, all those issues that we've had. Mm -hmm. So this is a positive thing. So it replaces the 320 fire radios and can uh, also instead it, it's going to be, um, well, also a 100-year-old fire maintenance shop. 100-year-old fire maintenance shop is going to put a boost to that. Well, it's going to increase the transparency mm -hmm. so we can have a visual of what the police got to go through out there and also bring truth to the community knowing that they're doing a fine job. It also is talking about committing $5 million in capital improvements for badly needed repairs and renovations in park facilities throughout Fresno. We definitely need that. Mm -hmm. There's a local park that we like to walk at and we mm -hmm. go to. And we're looking at some things that could be renovated. And that is for our, our kids so that they do have a place to go. Mm -hmm. And it funds 3.1 additional trails and dedicates an additional $2.13 million towards basic street repairs. 
within all the council districts. And mm -hmm. yeah, also specific plans for Southwest Fresno, Southeast Fresno and Central West Fresno. Mm. So they're gonna do, be doing some in-depth neighborhood revitalizations just in those areas. So of course that means like the Lowell, Yokomi, Jefferson, Kirk, all those areas, El Dorado, and um, the Blackstone Corridor. So people are familiar with those neighborhoods. So we're really looking forward to those changes of the proposed 2016 uh, City of Fresno budget. I can't wait to see those changes so I can take advantage of some of those changes and, and especially at the park and see the beautiful. Yeah, we noticed those changes, that's yeah. for certain. And speaking of those changes in District 3, we also, oh, well, before I get to the District 3, they also want to let people know that the task force met, again, this is City of Fresno, in October 2014 in April and focused on some key areas. And for, here's some implementation these strategies they want to do for 2015 and 2016. Repeal and replace vacant building ordinances. I know that's been a big deal. Um, we saw one of our... Uh, we won't bring it you up. You want to bring that up now? No, 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 we won't. Okay. But we will talk about the vacant buildings, and there was a company that was supposed to be having this um, very solid proof way of not having those windows broken, and that method didn't quite work. Um, as a former baseball player, didn't work, quite work. Didn't work, didn't at, work all. at all. Uh, a former baseball player did show that. But yeah. anyways, uh, we <laughs> that's what we're talking about with the the vacant buildings, that this has been something they've really been working on. So they're gonna conduct a CY survey of all residential properties, establish a vacant blighted residential property enforcement team. So they're gonna have a team of people going out and they're upgrading technology and equipment for this enforcement team. I wonder mm. what that's gonna look like. Hmm. Well, it's gonna be until. I guess we gotta see what that is. So anyways, we do wanna talk about that. We just wanted to reiterate the city of Fresno that is doing those changes. They let us know, they send us uh, email information at media at ampdvnow.com. <laughs> That's where they sent it to us. So we wanted to make sure you knew about the task uh, force that is making sure they take care of those blighted areas, which has been a concern for many of us. We're talking about those blighted areas. And District 3, they want to let us know they have their updates as well. Uh, in fact, Saturday, May 16th from 10 to 2, they're doing Building Neighborhood Capacity Celebration. It's a church block party. And that's mm -hmm. going to be at Yokomi Elementary School on 2323 East McKenzie. And you can get more information by contacting the District 3 office. Now, there was a Southwest specific plan that we talked about earlier. And that plan is going to have some systematic implementation um, of the general plan, which we just discussed with the City of Fresno's 2016 fiscal budget. And so the Southwest plan covers an area south of Highway 180 and State Route 99. And so on April 23rd and 25th, workshops were held in the community to discuss the beginnings of this. So this isn't something that's going to be done overnight. I want people it's to understand that. It seems like a lot is going on in Fresno. <laughs> a lot is going on. A lot on. of people say there's nothing going on in Fresno, but it's something going on in apparently Fresno. it's something going on in Fresno. Right. So for the community to understand, um, you definitely contact District 3. Again, that would be the Honorable Oliver Baines the third, who has information about that in regards to, and you won't, I don't know if you can get directly to him, but you can get directly to his office. And that's about the Southwest specific plan. And they are using input from workshop consultants, city planning, they're drafting a plan alternatives. In fact, they have a community meeting on May 28th. And the time and place will be announced, but that community meeting will be on May 28th for you to find out what are these implementation plans and we wanted to bring that to you so you understood how important it is that you can be there and so they're going to be talking about the final complete streets plan recommendations and they'll be presented to the planning commission and the city council and then late october and later including the southwest fresno specific plan and mm -hmm. so we think that's important because there's been a lot of emphasis put on southwest fresno and what's breaking down out there and what is not fixed you know, mm -hmm. the streets that need to be fixed. You know, we're always hearing about something. So this will be uh, the time for you to be a part of this plan, to know what's going on. I know a lot of times we emphasize what's going on in the black community mm -hmm. and we be on locations. Right now we're in our studio mm -hmm. and we bring in these um, announcements for the, our community to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that you are aware where these I don't want you to say, are. well, I didn't know. Well, on me Sunday mornings right here, Julie Dudley Najib and Linus Najib are talking about it with you so that you do know. If you didn't know, and now you need you know. to be a part of it. Yeah. They need to be a part you of what's going on. You need to be a part on. of that. So you know. a lot of people be like, well, they should do this or well, they should do that or why they don't do this. But why now can't you, you be a part of it and understand? And be a part of it and help 
make those things happen. Right. And again, so that meeting will be May 28th. Just put that date on your calendar. Or at least be informed. Right, and you'll be informed. Uh, meanwhile, after the break, we're going to have Valley Black Talk Radio, some excerpts from last week's segment. It's always um, enlightening being on with Jewel Riversmith and Mel Sanders and myself, Julia Dudley Najib. You are watching On Me Sunday Mornings. We'll be right back after the break. Want to be a featured DIY expert on AMP TV Now News? Have five years' experience in the field of knowledge you want to share with millions of viewers? Great! Find out how you can earn money by helping others make their lives better. DIY, do it yourself, can mean viewers are saving money, enhancing their lives, or looking at a more efficient way of doing a task. If you've got the information to share, we've got the hookup for the digital download. Find out more by going to news.amptvnow.com. That's news.amptvnow.com. Get help with sorting your finances by following the best DIY expert advice featured on AMP TV Now News. Get in-depth information throughout the week about the experts from news hosts Julia and Lennis who do an in-depth report of what's in that $4.99 digital download. A digital load of information to help enhance your life, business, family, and more. See the latest DIY feature this week by checking out our website at news.amptvnow.com. That's news.amptvnow.com. I love delicious homemade desserts, but recipes take so long to make. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new Dump Cake Cookbook. It's as simple as dump and bake for delicious desserts every time, guaranteed. And easy? Here's the cake mix. Just dump on the good stuff, bake and voila, the best dessert ever. You don't need to spend hours to make homemade cakes. Get my Dump Cake Cookbook today for only $10. But wait, call now and get my amazing Dump Dinner Cookbook. Easily make meals in minutes, like my deeply delish pizza. Mm-mm. Hold on, you can also get the nonstick oven mat. Make easy dump recipes and forget spills or splatters, because now cleanup's easy too. Plus, it's reusable, so your oven will always sparkle. You can get dump cakes and dump dinners, plus the nonstick oven mat for $10. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-660-9785 to get your Dump Cakes cookbook on this special TV offer. Call now or go to buydumpcakes.com. So call 1-800-660-9785. A heart attack, stroke, an evasive cancer, in-stage renal failure, major organ, ALS, blindness, paralysis. Too much to think about. So why not ease your mind through MKG Insurance Agency? They'll handle all of your needs. Call them today, 559-460-7504, 559-460-7504. Dinner can take hours to make, and who has the time? Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new Dump Dinner Cookbook. Now just dump and bake for full meals in minutes. Look at these smothered pork chops, or this, the best pan pizza ever, or start with chicken and mixed veggies. Add a can of creamy chicken soup, a few chunks of Velveeta cheese, and top with a can of crescent rolls. Cheesy chicken pot pie with perfect flaky crust. Or try this shortcut ravioli lasagna. Dump frozen raviolis on tomato sauce. Add fresh spinach and cheese. Layer as high as you like for steamy, melty, home-style lasagna. Stop slaving over dinner. Make delicious meals in a flash with Dump Dinners, just $10. But wait, call now and you can get my best-selling Dump Cake Cookbook. Just dump and bake for the best cakes ever. You can get dump dinners and dump cakes for $10. Here's how to order. Call 1-800-781-0038 to get your dump dinners cookbook on this special TV offer. It's not sold in stores, so call now or go to buydumpdinners.com. Don't miss out. Call now. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated of the San Joaquin Valley Alumni Chapter present the 22nd African American High School Recognition Ceremony 2015. So join us on Sunday, June 7th as we celebrate from 3 to 5 p.m. students who are ready to take the next step. Admission is free and will be at the Fresno State Satellite Student Union. The cost for participants who would like their kente cloth is $15. Speaker includes Teresa Price, founder and executive director of National College Resource Foundation. For application and information on sponsorship or how your participant can be involved in this event for the 2015 High School Recognition Ceremony, call Kimberly Lewis at 559-246-0494 or Lisa Nichols at 559-5799. 577-9793. It takes a village to raise a child. Welcome back to On Me Sunday Mornings. My name is Julia Dudley Najib along with Lennis Najib. 
And we want to get right into our Valley Black Talk radio segment. And again, a few hours have, that have changed. Only change that is, is from 8 to 9, we still have our AMP TV mm. on me. And then from 9 to 11 will be Valley Black Talk radio on 1680 AM. That's a minor change, right? Yes. Okay. And we encourage our audience to call in yeah. and make it make it very interesting calls to call in and we already get your, interesting calls and, <laughs> and, and give your opinion of what the topics and stuff that we are talking about. Or you just want to listen, and you can always listen online. And again, that's at sixteen eighty am. dot amptvnow. You can listen to that through your mobile phone, your mobile device. There's also a tune in app, and it is free, and you can download that and follow us, and that way you know when we are on. So again, from eight to nine, you do have the repeat of the On Me Sunday Mornings broadcast or AMPTV Now News broadcast. Sometimes we will redo that there, and then followed by nine to eleven p.m. It is a live broadcast with Valley Black Talk Radio. So let's take a look at what Valley Black Talk Radio had to say this past week. Johannes Meserly and the same reason they did it for the, the no, OJ was in L.A. His guys were, no, no, they were outside no, he, of L.A. Yeah, he went to. Uh, they they got a Valley change of venue also. Yeah. So because they don't want cops convicted. That's why. OK, but I understand. They're that, that why, but I, it just this it has a different tone to it, a different ring to it in terms well, of sending shockwaves throughout the country. And with listening to uh, Elijah Cummings over the weekend, mm -hmm. him talking about all the congressmen calling him and saying, hey, mm -hmm. look, man, we need to we need to do something because I have a strong feeling this is going to happen in my city this summer, mm -hmm. which means to me, suggests to me that politics is going to play a big role in this and that. Once people start mobilizing and mm -hmm. start looking around the country about where can we impact uh, elections, understanding that politicians set the tone mm -hmm. for what's happening at police departments. Mm -hmm. If it was not for the kind of politicians that would hire police chiefs or, or, or mayors or, or, or folks who hired, uh, 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 what, what, what do we have here? We have a uh, city manager mm -hmm. who hires a police chief. Things would be different. So once people understand that, my vote really does matter in terms of who's going to be knocking mm -hmm. on my door, kicking my, you know, pulling me over. Mm -hmm. that kind of, when they understand that, I think that's going to change the culture of the communities around the country to say, let's do things differently. And well, it's not going to happen overnight. I mean, they, yeah, they, it's, it's not a, because it's still going to be someone who's blue kicking in your door. So you, yeah, but you that need blue's to gonna be a little more ca cautious because of what happened here in Baltimore mm -hmm. could happen to me in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, well, but I'm just saying, unless they change the training for officers, and and you know, I, I'm I don't I'm, know if you can change I have the mixed feelings about the cameras. I don't think you can change mm -hmm. it. the change. The training's not going to be the issue. Mm -hmm. Picking the right individuals is more important to me. Okay. Than mm -hmm. the training. Training means you need to use some common sense when you go to a 80 year old woman's house to not mm -hmm. go in there kicking in the doors and you know you know you things that you should know. The yeah, culture but of they a don't police know, officer. They've been doing that, though. Yeah, because and, the culture of the mm -hmm. police officer is, we told you to go through the door, don't ask any questions. And mm -hmm. that's what they do. Yeah. Well, don't and, do and, any thinking. Just do what we told you to do. Mm -hmm. But they get away with it, and I think that's partly because training. Part they, they have not been trained to not shoot, at least in North Carolina, yeah, yeah. that you don't shoot a person in the back. That you South don't Carolina, use right? deadly... South, South Carolina. Carolina yeah. You don't use deadly force unless the fleeing person is an immediate danger provable danger mm -hmm. to himself or other, not even to himself if he's a danger to himself let him mm -hmm. go if he's a danger to, if, if he's convicted if he's accused of rape murder some serious bodily injury to another mm -hmm. person and you're other in hot than pursuit. that shoot him in the ankle shoot him in the foot they're shoot him in the knee. That. and that's and my point that's that. why i say training matters because nobody why should would you be train trained someone to do that because Everyone deserves their day in court. And you don't kill them but, before they get their day in court. But every officer deserves to go home any, at night. If he's fleeing, he's not a threat to you. But if he's not fleeing, but, and you but tell I'm talking me to about, shoot we're talking about him the case. But I said they are if he's fleeing, well, you don't shoot somebody in the well, back. Well, you don't shoot him. I mean, if he's going away and he's no threat, yeah, I understand well, that. Okay. But I'm talking about j their basic training in terms of mm. where they should shoot. I don't know if I want them to change that. I just I want, want them, them to not to it. shoot, period. Nah. Because what if they miss that foot and they hit somebody behind them? Little eight year old girl that was just playing, you know. Ah, if you're not shooting, oh. hitting the center mass, don't try to tell me you're going to hit him in the leg. Okay, well, no, I'd be okay with that. Yeah. I'd be okay with don't so shoot don't at shoot. all. So don't shoot. Yeah, that's that's that's. I believe that should be the way. To... Mm -hmm. uh, but again, it's training. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. CNN. 
she's usually well-known news anchor, but it also tells us the divide, what you were talking about before, Jewel, uh-huh. as far as obviously there's a black America and then there's the other America. For her to not know, when they were scanning the audience, this is May 1st, and they you have the Crips and the Blood, two known uh, uh, gangs that are known nationwide, actually, were coming to a town hall meeting to talk about how they are coming together, you know, to uh, to protest in peacefully against what was happening in regards to the Freddie Gray. Mm-hmm. And so as the camera is scanning the audience, you have some Zeta Phi Beta sorority sitting in the audience, and she commented how on how the Crips were in the audience, you know, the uh, affiliated gang members. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to refrain from laughing. <laughs> the right. Crips are in the audience because she saw Zeta Phi Beta. She saw Zeta Phi Beta. Um, it, normally we know Greek lettering and last I checked I don't know any gang that wears any Greek lettering <laughs> I'll start with that I don't either <laughs> you know, that's why we laugh on the radio yeah so uh, <laughs> that's my first bit of laughter because that shows you know the divide not knowing something basic of just looking at the because yeah. they have their Greek letters across their shirts so you would think that they're affiliated to something other than a gang yeah. or because you assume they were all black and wearing blue and mm-hmm. white that must and be the Crips and their shirts matched yes. so there must be some they yeah. must, that must be the Crips you know because they would be affiliated with the color blue <laughs> the difference with these shirts is they had Greek lettering <laughs> how old is this Erin Burnett? old enough to know better I will say well, that well is she under 40? Mm. Here's why I Barely. ask. Bar- yeah, because really, there is, uh, among this Generation X, this generation that came up with all the technology and everything that relates so much better to uh, machines than to humans, mm. there is a frightening inability to think, inability to extrapolate. You know, I always say smart is knowing something. Two plus two is four. Mm-hmm. Intelligence is how you apply that knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, she might not know anything about Zeta Phi Beta, right? But if she lives in the United States, in the world, really, but in the United States, she knows what a fraternity and a sorority are. And hence the Greek they're letter everywhere. would give it away. Exactly. So even though she saw a bunch of black people, it, it goes to show you her own <laughs> That's that level of intellectual, and right. of intellectual rigor. Because even though it's a bunch of black people, you see Greek lettering. Why would you go to it must be a gang rather than, oh... I don't know what fraternity or sorority or they are. Or what organization. Or what organization. But they have Greek lettering, so I'm going to assume they're Greeks. You know, they're fraternity, sorority. Mm-hmm. Why would you go to gang? I don't know. Unless you can't think. What are they teaching these people? I, well, in? that's the sad part is because she's a news reporter, and she's reporting this nationwide and also internationally. And again, Valley Black Talk Radio, radio is always a lively discussion. You never mm. know what's going to come. You never know what the topic's going to be mm. until it just happens. That's why I like live radio, because it just happens. And so we hope you enjoyed this edition of On Me Sunday Mornings. We want you to have a great week. This is Julia Dudley Najib signing out, along with... Lennis Najib. We'll see you next week.